G'day fellow R2 builders. Um, I just thought I'd give you a quick update on my DIY uh, transmitter for my R2 build. Um, I've previously posted um, some photographs there of uh, other prototypes and uh, the circuit board so far. Um, now I have a finished photo uh, prototype here um, of something that I might, uh, might go a little bit more forward with. Um, the code is almost finished for this, it's not, not quite uh, how we want it, just a little bit more work there, but um, it's getting close. Uh, this is just a normal uh, uh, electronics or a uh, enclosure that I got from an um, electronics store. Um, the beauty part about this system is, is not only does it have your uh, four normal channels there, but it also has these two banks of five and the 10 switches in there along with these four function switches. Uh, the idea of these four function switches is that brings uh, allows you to have basically 80, 80 um, switches all up um, and you can program them to uh, open doors or play different sounds or whatever. I've probably got more than enough switches um, there uh, than I'll ever use but uh, hey look um, better to be safe than sorry, better to have more than uh, uh, not enough. You can probably have more than 80 functions if you um, you know change the combination of those those switches there. Uh, inside is a, uh, a DIY um, module that um, transmitter module that Hobby King sells um, and uh, everything's all enclosed in here. It's got a standard RC uh, uh, RC transmitter battery pack in there that I can charge through here using a, um, a standard RC transmitter uh, uh, jack, which I've used mine from my Futaba radio. Um, that's worked well. I can also program the uh, microcontroller up through here. I've also got the, the function of the transmitter there to um, uh, do the fail safe and also uh, bind with the receiver. And I suppose the, the beauty part about this system is, is not only does it have plenty of si uh, switches, but it's, it's um, got all those fail safe uh, features that normal uh, radio um, equipment has, meaning that you can set up the fail safes on all the channels um, and that way at least you know if it's going to lose signal R2 is not going to run away from you and as uh, and also with that it has a, a, a very good range um, the box itself is, is nice and thin although it probably is a little bit bigger than I, I wanted it to be but um, I've engraved R2's logo up there and and that and uh, and tried to make it a little bit more colorful than just a, a black and gray grey box there. I think it um, it kind of looks okay. There's a few little things I'm not quite happy with that I've got to change in the uh, in the um, on the box itself. There's uh, another idea that I'm working with here um, is a uh, a standard electronics enclosure that you can buy at your electronic shops. This one here is a probably a little bit deeper and a little bit smaller. And I'm just uh, taking the top off that. Um, and I've taken a little, I've milled a little bit of uh, off this to make it a little bit narrower, and I'm just um, cutting um, a coloured electric, uh, uh, a coloured acrylic panel there um, for uh, my other parts. That's a circuit board there um, that I've uh, put up on the uh, the thread that I have. Um, behind there are the switches that are mounted in there, um, all the connectors here. Inside here we've got a PicX 40X2 microcontroller running at 16 megahertz, which is at the heart of that, um, and everything's in uh, running off uh, through a 5 volt regulator. So basically, because it's got no LCD to run or anything like that, it's just got a startup sound. the The power consumption is 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 um, is very minimal, so the batteries on this uh, should last. Uh, quite a while. Um, also, the, the good thing I think about this system is is it um, would be um, compatible 
with the uh, uh, Jedi system that's going around. Um, all you would need to do is some uh, script changes uh, in the software. Um, I know that um, the Jedi system um, uses uh, joystick mapping to generate sounds and all that sort of stuff. Well, basically, you wouldn't have to do that. You would, it would just be a matter of uh, programming um, these switches. Uh, the beauty part about this also is it's very easy to predict what's on the other side. Um, obviously, you would have a microcontroller in uh, R2 that you would be decoding um, all those uh, signals from your uh, receiver. Um, and these, uh, these switches here um, output a set um, a set uh, uh, um, uh, uh, pulse, so um, um, that's easy to predict, and then you could have that triggering sounds or opening doors or something like that. Um, so yeah, look, uh, my next update is uh, going to have um, this working properly with an RC receiver. Um, and also I'll have a uh, microcontroller there decoding um, uh, the receiver and actually turning on um, some things and playing some sounds and you'll get to see the, the whole system working. I know that there's other um, IDs out there for uh, transmitters and, and, and people have played with Zigbee and all that sort of stuff and I know that there's one out there that's um, uh, that people can gain access to and it's uh, um, got an LCD screen and all that sort of stuff but I think uh, this system is quite easy to um, implement um, it's you know you've got easy access to all the functions that you have you don't have to scroll through any manuals or anything like that um, I think uh, in the long run um, I probably will have an LCD screen there um, with the ability of some um, receivers these days with telemetry and all that sort of stuff you could read voltage levels of R2 and send that back and, and that would be kind of handy to have. But until uh, my next update, um, that's it for uh, me now. Um, that's the R2 uh, DIY transmitter. Thanks for uh, watching.